Max was diagnosed when he was a day old. Uh, actually, he was taking an emergency C-section uh, at my 38-week appointment. Uh, so they couldn't get a good heartbeat, and that was the first arrhythmia issue that had ever entered discussion uh, that had ever been a problem. So he was born, but he seemed fine. They said, oh, this happens sometimes. You just get a little quip on the machine and whatever. So we thought we were fine. And the next day, they did an echocardiogram just to make sure that there was nothing wrong. And unfortunately, they did find that he had a heart condition, structural damage. And at that moment, they didn't know what exactly it was. So they said, kiss your baby. He's going to the NICU. And he was gone. And so my husband was able to go up to the NICU and be with him mostly. Um, as the moms, you usually can't because after, especially after a C-section. Uh, so I didn't spend as much time in the NICU as my husband did. But um, that first day was our longest day because we didn't know what we were dealing with. And we didn't have anyone in our life that had um, a child with a heart condition. And you know, you're dealing with a heart, so it's very scary. And as a mom, you're faced with, you know, are we talking heart transplant? Like, how do you pray for that, you know? Um, so it just was very scary that day. Then they handed us a brochure, and it says he has Tetralogy Fallot, and I thought, well, at least it has a flyer. <laughs> so they've done this once or twice. They've, um, we had some options. Where we live, um, we, we're in Southern California, so we have several options around us. And so Max was in the NICU for a week, and then after that, when we took him home, then we began our journey of deciding doctors and hospitals and surgeons and uh, we entered our, our heart world and eventually led Max, after his initial heart surgery, it led into him having um, needed, requiring a full-time pacemaker. You know, the whole experience, when I first heard about that he required a pacemaker, um, it just brought the whole experience. You know, you're entering a world of language you don't understand. Half the time you don't want to because it's too frightening. Um, and I wasn't one of those that needed to research and know every single what every single thing meant. But the pacemaker to me seemed really limiting. It seemed like everyone would say, oh, so-and-so has a pacemaker, but it was always re in reference to their grandparent or their you know, older uncle or something. It was never, oh, my, my neighbor who's a child. I've never heard of a child requiring a pacemaker. It, it for the first time in the whole journey, felt like, uh-oh, we might not be able to give this kid a normal life. We might be faced with something that is a lot more limiting to his choices for what he can do. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, the very first doctor that we dealt with was just, you know, how doctors are. They're busy. They're just trying to brush. And, and we had some great doctors. But this in particular doctor who was talking to us about, he was just telling us all the things Max wasn't going to do. And Max had just survived his second heart surgery. And we were just fresh out of recovery. And we had just been handed a brochure that only showed old people. It showed them shuffleboarding, it sh you know, on a cruise. It showed them on a computer. It, it didn't show anything young. And then the doctor told us everything he wasn't going to do. And I remember visually just batting his words away from Max's little face, saying, you're not going to tell me what we can't do. Because this kid has just done, in 11 days, what I don't know if I could do. So it's the first time it felt limiting. The perspective of time takes you to a different place. And six years later, I can say, and, and actually a year later, I could have said it, it gives your child the quality of life. It doesn't just prolong it, because Max clearly needs it to survive. It gives it a quality that's incredible. I could go back and tell myself at this point, he's going to be the fastest kid on his t-ball team. He's going to swim until, you know, more than his brother. He's going to have more energy than you. You'll quit on him before he'll quit on you when you're playing any activity. It, you know, he's going to be able to stand up and paint and draw. He's going to read. He's going to have friends. He's going to have a birthday party that he can climb the slides at Scooter's Jungle. Um, all those things that I didn't think were going to be possible for him are possible not in spite of his pacemaker, but because of it. And it's the gift that at the time, um, I look back at my journals, I was having our network pray that he wouldn't have to have it. I mean, I was really, really terrified of him having this. And probably what it brings is it, it does require more hospital visits, which gets scarier as he gets older for him. Um, it requires more attention. It requires more surgeries. But, um, you know, every everything that's amazing in your life didn't just get handed and it wasn't just easy. You've overcome something. So we've learned our drill and how to handle those, navigate those situations. And when the moments are hard, they're hard, but you know, you just got to play equally as hard when the moment, you know, when the levity comes.